In James 2, 1, it says, my brothers and sisters, believers in our gracious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. And I love that it's very clear in its guidance to say, hey, this is something that can hurt people. If you feel like this is something that's going on in your family, like get with God with, on that, you know, get with your spouse and just be like, hey, like I'm open to your honest feedback. Do I show favoritism? You know, when you walk in, do you hug the same children first every time? Do you engage with them more? Uh, do you, you know, send them more maybe text messages or what is that relationship like? So your blended family has a 100% chance of success when you do it God's way. We are Blended Kingdom Families, and we want to provide biblical resources to heal and restore families with a message of hope for the next generation. Hey guys, welcome to the BKF Podcast. We are so excited you're here with us today. Today, I think this is going to be a really fun topic. Yeah. Um, because it, it addresses favoritism. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes our human nature shows favoritism in different ways. Yeah. But in blended families, it does take a different kind of dynamic of people and kiddos and and maybe our human nature says we're gonna show a little bit more favoritism or favor to certain ones. And right. we wanna be able to recognize that and identify it. So. Yeah. So we've written down some recognizing signs of favoritism. So these are some things you guys mm -hmm. that can show that you may be favoring one child over yeah. the other, biological or step. Unequal distribution of time, mm -hmm. attention, or resources. Mm -hmm. Different rules or expectations for different children. Inconsistent discipline. Exclusion from family activities or decisions. Now, th this isn't like a exhausted list. This, yeah. These are just some things. But, you know, going back to when it says, um, you know, different rules or expectations for different children – the uh, unequal distribution of time, attention, or resources. You know, I think this gets brought up a lot, especially yeah. when we're coaching and we're yeah. counseling. Uh, you know, you hear of a lot of uh, spouses, they'll say, hey, like my, you know, th this person, you know, my spouse bought this and this, this and this for their children, but left my children mm -hmm. out of it. And, you know, then they're feeling this resentment and, you know, like it feels like that the one parent is showing favoritism to their biological children over their stepchildren. Mm -hmm. And understanding that, sure, there are going to be things that we, um, special things or special times that we have with each individual child where we may take them um, to a movie and then you go shopping afterwards and you yeah. get them a special toy or you take them for ice cream or things like that. I think there's, you know, these little moments that we have with our kids where we can do that. But I think in the, you know, when you're looking at it from, you know, um, you know, from a higher level of like, you know, when it comes to your daily interactions, when it comes to mm -hmm. those holiday seasons as well, you know, are we, um, are we showing favoritism by the things that we're doing? Yeah. Well, I think also, you know, you ask yourself, why show favoritism? So yeah. why would anybody show favoritism to anybody? And a lot of it is the connection that we have with that particular sure. uh, child or maybe the, um, the amount of, of confirmation or reassurance that we get from that child. Yeah. And, and, and I think there's, you know, a natural to say, well, my biological children are going to be more receptive. They're more appreciative. Yeah. We have a stronger connection. But that's not always the case. I think depending upon the age of your children, I think that sure. you can find different connection points. Um, and you can find you're, you're dividing your time unequally or you're dividing your your treasures unequally simply because of the the what you get in return. Yeah. And... One of the quotes, and, and it's not really, I don't know who said this quote, it's just something that, that comes to my mind, is is parents are always parents and children are always children. Mm. Meaning it's our responsibility as parents to understand yeah. that children are children and we are the parents. So we have the uh, authority mm -hmm. to make sure that we act as parents all the time to each one of them. Yeah. So we shouldn't be looking for the reassurance as the measuring stick by, okay, then I'm gonna spend more time with this child, or I'm going to not do this for this child because they haven't shown me respect or they haven't shown yeah. appreciation for it. Um, so that's just kind of our own, you know, just innate understanding of who we are and what our role is. Yeah, I think too, you know, we talk about communication a lot, I think almost in every episode, <laughs> mm -hmm. but open communication and being able to encourage family discussions around feelings and concerns, because I know even with our biological children, yeah. I've, I've, I know I've said to you like, hey, like, 
Yeah. I, I feel like you need to spend a little bit more time with Case on this and not taking offense to that. Yeah. Um, you know, we want to believe the best in our partner. And, you know, when you have multiple kids and especially in blended mm -hmm. families, you know, your time, I mean, you're, you're all over the place. Like you're, yeah. you're, you're being split into to so many different places and, you know, situations and, and relationships all the time. And so, um, so have that conversation with your spouse of, of like, Hey, can you be an accountability partner for me? Mm -hmm. And if you see that I'm spending more time with one kid than the other, or, you know, you know, hey, if you're feeling like I need to do more of this, would you please just call that out? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and be open to receiving that and understanding that, like, uh, that your spouse has your best interest in mind and your kids and step kids' interest in mind. So I would just say, like, start by open communication. And if you you are somebody that's listening, you're like, man, I feel like my spouse is major. You know, they're playing favoritism right now. Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you to go 10% more vulnerable and be brave to, to to have that conversation and sit down and say, Hey, I love you. Please understand this is coming from a place of like love and concern, but I, I've noticed, you know, it feels like this, or even like the child has expressed that, Hey, Tommy expressed to me that he feels like you don't mm. love him as much because you're not spending time with him or, or whatever that kids, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of blended families struggle in this, especially when they blend with older children, mm -hmm. not, not necessarily adult children, but I'm talking about more like teenager children. Yeah. And whether you're a blended family or you're not, teenage children are sometimes very hard to connect with and very hard to, uh, uh, maybe it's a very easy to show favoritism to smaller children because yeah. honestly, they're sometimes more fun and yeah. they're more like, hey, social and things like that. But I see uh, one of the situations that I remember is I was coaching a, a family and they had a teenage son and the teenage son was like, I don't think, I don't think the, the step parent likes me. Yeah. And you know, there, there is some onus on some communication, even to the children to say, Hey, listen, they're really trying, but you need to meet them in a certain spot and to say, I'm going to receive what you're giving me. I'm receiving yeah. the time or I'm receiving the gift. Mm -hmm. Um, because we know that there's, um, you know, opportunities for competition or mm -hmm. even, you know, biological bias, a parent bias. Yeah. And so sometimes that step parent is really trying to connect and this that's just not showing there. So I love what you said about open communication because we want to have that our spouse say, hey, I, I recognize this. But on the flip side of that, we want also our that spouse who's recognized it to create opportunities yeah. to say, hey, they're trying to bond with you here. They're trying not mm -hmm. to show favoritism. But I think as step parents, you can look at it and say, I don't want to hit my head against the wall all the time. Yeah. So I want to find some some growth room there. Well, I think too, creating that safe space for all family members, even if it's mm -hmm. the kids that are trying to express that themselves, you want to listen actively and, and, and validate everyone's emotions. You know, and mm -hmm. it can look like this, practically speaking, like, I am so sorry that you feel that way. Can you please explain to me or tell me mm -hmm. um, how I could do this better? Or what would you like for this to mm -hmm. look like? And get their input. And that could be to your children, it could be to your spouse or whoever it is that feels like, yeah. you know, they're not getting, um, or that there's favoritism going on. And then I would also say establish clear, you know, family like boundaries and mm -hmm. and expectations around that, you know, is, is you know, we don't want it to become like this tit for tat thing, but at the same time, if it's, you know, we try to be really intentional about spending one-on-one -on -one time with our boys. And mm -hmm. so that's where the parents can come together and say, hey, this month, um, you know, I'm a mom of boys. Hey, I'm going to do a, a date night with Grayson yeah. on this day, a date, you know, this, this, or this, take him to the movies, whatever. Um, you know, if you're a dad of, gir of girls or stepped girls, you know, y you and your spouse working together to create those opportunities mm -hmm. so that you can... Um, you know, have that time for each individual child. Yeah. And rules are so important here. And I think this is where a lot of people get that favoritism concept is mm -hmm. the rules apply to me, but not to you. Mm -hmm. They're harder on me than they are you. And I think parents, we're not we're not immune to this concept of expectations. So maybe we do have higher expectations on one child or another, and our rules are different. So here's my encouragement to you. As a home, as a family, say, these are the rules and they apply to everybody the same. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a biological step, whether you're here only two days every other week or you're here full time, yeah. these are the constant rules that we apply and there's no favoritism or special treatment um, that is universal, that's right. going to happen on a regular basis. Now we understand there are maybe there are certain occurrences where somebody may get a different treatment, but universally talking to all the kids and saying, here are the rules, everybody's going to follow them, setting a one baseline and saying, this is how we're going to do this and avoid 
that favoritism conversation. Well, I, you know, I, I think an example of, of some of this too is like just practically like Christmas time. Like we had this mm -hmm. rule of like, hey, each kid gets only like three big gifts or whatever. Yeah. Like it's the same amount, but like, you mm -hmm. know, you're going to get three of these. I think a lot of times where we see this um, come into play too is with grandparents, grandparents because biological grandparents will want to shower their um their, their biological grandchildren yeah. with these gifts, but there's nothing for the stepchildren. And I think that's where we as parents, when it comes yeah. to the your um, your extended family, that's where you have to come together in a marriage and say, hey, mom and dad on both sides. Like if you're buying for your biologicals, we expect the same for this child and yeah. and holding them to that because then that's mm -hmm. where the, the children, you know, and they're the innocent ones in this mm -hmm. that are like, hey, my new grandparent, I don't feel like, you know, they love me or they, whatever it may be. And it's because of the actions and the things that they're doing towards their biological ch grandchildren that are different from them. Mm -hmm. And understanding, we understand that relationships and these things take time. But again, we've talked about this before. It's the choice. You are making the active intentional choice mm -hmm. to do these things um, and and do it with love and with grace. Well, and, and also recognize that it may not come normal to you. Mm -hmm. This may be something that you really actively have to think about. Yeah. Because children are much more observant than you think, and their their idea of what favoritism is uh, can be very clouded in the details. Yeah. So uh, as simple as, you know, when you walk in, do you hug the same children first every time? Do you engage with them more? Uh, do you, you know, send them more maybe text messages? Or what is that relationship like? So the idea of intentionality in parenting and adds that, tends to uh, avoid favoritism is something we have to consciously think about all yeah. the time. Well, you know, we talk about promoting bonding opportunities. Yeah. So, you know, encourage the one-on-one -on -one time between step parents and the stepchildren. Plan yeah. inclusive family activities. Mm -hmm. Go on vacations together. Um, you know, building equal relationships with biological children and stepchildren. Mm -hmm. Again, you guys, it's it's about intentionality and taking that dedicated time to do those things. You also want to practice self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is huge in blended mm -hmm. families. Um, reflect on your own personal biases and behaviors like what is within me that is preventing me from doing this mm -hmm. you know um when i'm spending time with my stepchild i automatically have this gut whatever feeling that's very awkward and weird that's not the same as i do with my biological mm -hmm. children guys get with god on that get mm -hmm. with um a, a godly mentorship or counsel and talk about that because i know that that's something mm -hmm. that you know we've talked about this before mm -hmm. that step parents face. They're like, man, I'm trying, but like, it's just not there. Yeah. You know? And so I guess the easy way to say this is don't look for a feeling mm -hmm. uh, because it may not be there. Yeah. You may not have that feeling. And mm -hmm. and we've talked about this a lot. You may not feel the same way about your stepchildren as you do your biological children. This is where the act of intentionality and, and, and very specific actions where you show love as a verb mm -hmm. becomes apparent. Yeah. Um, is understanding that you may not feel the same way or you may have a little bit of uh, anxiety around, especially if you're newly blended and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm with this child for the first time and we've only been married for a few months and you know, I really don't know him that well yeah. and we're kind of like awkward strangers and so I don't really know how to bond. It's saying, okay, I understand that I feel this way. I understand that and acknowledge the fact that I feel different about this child than I do the other child, but... That's the way I feel. I, I don't have to communicate that, mm -hmm. but I can also intentionally say, okay, I'm still going to spend time with you. I'm still going to create a process where over time we develop very intense feelings of attachment. Yeah. And you got to be patient with yourself. Well, and I think communication, we, we, we develop that in so many different ways. Like obviously the way that we speak, but it's also mm. in our body language. Sure. And so I think you know, it, like you said, when, when they come in, are the biological children the first children that they hug? Like, do you mm -hmm. smile um, at each of your children and stepchildren? You know, if your biological child comes in and says, hey, mom and dad, you know, I made a I made an A on my test. And then yeah. your other kid comes in, like, are you greeting them with the same enthusiasm, yeah. the same smile? Are you praising them are the you same way? Are you praising them the same way? Yeah. Um, and they may receive uh, praise in different ways. Some people are one-on-one. -on -one, some people like public recognition. Mm -hmm. Some are different. Um, so you got to kind of meet them with wh with what how it is that they receive because each child is unique. Mm -hmm. But giving them that, whether it's privately or publicly, mm -hmm. you know, um, making sure that you're you're doing that and that it's and that it is consistent as you were doing it with your biological children. Yeah, I think uh, the other thing is, and we talk a lot about 
you know, blended families in the aspects of, you know, the assumption that they're maybe little or kids, but a lot of people have teenagers and the ways that they are recognizing, um, you know, biased or favoritism could be in different ways too. So you may look at it and say, hey, my, my children are, you know, about to go to college or they're in the driving age. Um, so are we treating each one of them equally? And by doing that, you may have to pull back on what you would have done yeah. to your biological children. So remember that, you know, before you had stepchildren, you kind of said, okay, if there's two, I've divided it equally here. Yeah. When it becomes three, it's not they get 50% and the other one gets the leftovers. Now it becomes divided over 33%. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's looking at it going, okay, I'm going to judge this fairly and equally, whether that's, you know, the kind of car that they get mm-hmm. or, you know, deciding to pay, you know, for different things that are the expenses part of it. Um, you know, even as far as, and I don't know if we're going to get to this today, but even as far as like your life planning, your life, your, yeah. your state planning, things like that, I mean, showing real unbiased, unfavoritism to say, you're all our children, we're going to treat you equally. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's so good. Yeah. And I think it takes patience and persistence, right? Recognizing that building a cohesive blended family, like this takes mm-hmm. time, um, you know, committing to the long-term efforts and um, addressing biases and favoritism along the way. I mean, we we even have done this with our biological children. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know being, you know, since since all four of the children are my biological children and mm-hmm. you're the step-parent, I mean, that's been difficult for me to do, especially when they're different age ranges mm-hmm. because they're, this, you know, our oldest, like, it's just so different. The things that he's into, yeah. the things that he's de- doing, you know, doing the things that he likes versus our little children. Yeah. And how I spend time with them is significantly different than yeah. how I would spend time with with our oldest. And so, you know... Um, I think, you know, again, going back to that open communication, talking with your spouse and just being vulnerable enough, transparent enough, and just honest honest enough, you know, to say, hey, I, I'm seeing this mm-hmm. going on, you know, let's 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 talk through this. Yeah. And it's not one of those you're going to get perfect. No. Uh, I will say scripture, and scripture sometimes does this, it's very like, mm, like it's very specific. Mm-hmm. And in James 2, 1, it says, my brothers and sisters, believers in our gracious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Um, and I love that it's very clear in its guidance to say, hey, this is something that can hurt people. Mm-hmm. Favoritism is any direction biblically is, you know, it's to protect us and to protect people. Yeah. And so by showing favoritism, especially in families, it's going to cause division. It's going to cause divide. So what we favoritism want to... does, and we have to be careful, and this is what it does in society, favor, favoritism shows status. Mm. So if you are showing favoritism in your family and, or towards your, you know, mm. your, your kiddos, they're going to think like, oh, wow, like, yeah, they're the favorite one. I'm the least favorite. They're good. I'm bad. Or they're worthy. I'm not worthy. And I mean, we see, even see that as adults. Like when mm. You know, you go to an event or something and mm-hmm. um, somebody, you know, calls somebody out in the crowd or I don't know, whatever the situation is, even as adults, we can feel like, oh, wow, I'm not worthy of that because mm-hmm. I didn't get called on or this or whatever, whatever. And so I think that's what favoritism does is it shows a status that like, hey, you're greater. Hey, you're not that good. Well, and it's and it's more common than you think. Um, you know, the the National Step Family Resource Center says 65% of step families experience issues related to favoritism with stepchildren, often feeling less valued compared yeah. to biological children. And I love that they use the word valued yeah. because as humans, we want to we want to feel value. We well, want feel worthy. Exactly. Yeah. So if 65% of families say, hey, there's an issue where children don't feel valued, that they can make a contribution mm-hmm. or that they make uh, a significant feeling in your family, that's an issue. Yeah. Um, this, there's a really cool quote from Reese Witherspoon, and mm. she's, a, she's an actress, but she's also a, a blended family. And she said, mm. blending families comes with its own set of challenges, including dealing with favoritism. It's important to approach these issues with empathy and to make sure that every child feels they are an integral part of the family. I think today's culture, when we talk about relevant parts of the family, um, we have, we've eliminated so many parts of, of what that looks like. So I, I think back, like if you go back you know, 50, 60, 70 years in, in different cultures, every person had a job. Yeah. Especially as boys grew up, you became an integral part of like farming or uh, building, and you had an assignment that was related to the benefit of the family. Right. Today, we don't really, 
have that as much for kids. Mm -hmm. You know, kids are not a integral part of our, uh, of, of, of the functioning of the family. Yeah. And so to feel unvalued, whether that's in your opinion or that's in your uh, feelings on things, yeah. can be really easily overlooked. Yeah. You know, I think just to round this out and to, to end, mm -hmm. you know, I think encouraging all of us, you know, parents, step parents, reflecting mm -hmm. on our actions and, you know, trying to strive for just fairness, for unity, for peace, um, and relationships with all of our children and our stepchildren. Yeah. And if this is an area you struggle, you know, seeking godly counsel, seeking yeah. uh, biblical counseling for not only you, but your spouse and your children could be a very, very beneficial thing. So we hope this has encouraged you or at least opened an eye to an issue that's saying, hey, I don't know if this is going on, but I want to be aware of it. Yeah. And I think just, guys, we always talk about getting in the Lord's presence. Like, if you feel like this is something that's going on in your family, like get with God with on that. You know, get with your spouse and just be like, "Hey, like I'm open to your honest feedback. Do I show favoritism? You know, or maybe you, your spouse is doing it. Hey, I just want to give some, you know, honest feedback yeah. coming with love. You know, get with the Lord. Lord, is there any part of my heart where I'm showing favoritism in this family? Um and and seeking his guidance and his will to process through that. Yeah, 100%. Guys, thank you all so much for uh, tuning in with us today. If you haven't already, please take an opportunity and subscribe to the podcast. We'd love to alert you every single week when we drop a new podcast. You can also like, share, and leave us send a us review. Comment, leave us a review. Yeah. We would love to hear from you. You guys take care and have a wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do. Hey, friends. So glad you were here with us today, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we talk about more blended family topics. Be blessed in all that you do. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.